When the monster arrives, the soldiers get ready to start fighting it. They drive the creatures away, and the soldiers slowly get closer to their goal. But when they finally got there, it looked like several tentacles were coming after them. The men give up and start shooting, but one by one they are killed. A few weeks after attacking the soldiers, the same monster was teaching a high school class. The class was called to order by the teacher who looked most like the offspring of an octopus and Pac-Man. His students tried to kill him with rubber bullets. But how did a group of teens get into this story? Well, everything started when they were in their last year of school. They were in class 3E, e, which was made up of the worst students in all of Kunajigo school. On the other hand, class E is made up of the best students, who, according to the principal, have a bright future. Everyone in class E was sent to an empty building as a punishment for getting low grades. The reason the principal made this choice was so that they wouldn't get in the way of the growth of the other students. When they get to the classroom, they are in for a big shock. The students found out that their new teacher was an alien who had destroyed part of the moon and planned to do the same thing to Earth by the time they graduated. A member of the Japanese Ministry of Defense named Tomi Karma tells the students that their mission is to kill the professor before they graduate. If not, the whole world would be destroyed. But there was something wrong. That thing moved very quickly, and not even a professional agent could hit it once. The yellow monster tells the class that he has made a deal with the government in which he says he doesn't mind being killed as long as he can be classy then. Tomi talks about the bullets and knives that the Ministry of Defense has made. The fact that these weapons were made of a special material that didn't hurt people but killed the monster proved that he was telling the truth. The professor takes the gun out of the man's hand and shoots himself in the tentacle. The students are scared to see what's happening, but within a few seconds, the creature grows a new limb to replace the one that was torn off. No one knows why, the agent tells us. The deal the alien made with the government says that the students are safe because their teacher said he wouldn't hurt them. Lastly, the man says that the person who kills that monster and saves the earth will get 10 billion yen, which is about 77 million dollars. Since then, Tomi has become an assistant teacher to help train the students. They hired someone else to teach them English along with him. She is a very skilled agent whose name is Arena Yellick. She was sent to kill that powerful being who was a threat to the planet. But even with the help of a minigun, the woman's operation did not even come close to working. During breaks, Tomi would train the students in small ways, and over time, their fighting skills got better. One student in that class, Za, looked into all of his teacher's flaws. As soon as he walked into that class, he noticed that the color of his face changed depending on how he felt. On that day, three of his co-workers were trying to get him to join a plan that, they said, couldn't fail. The boy thought it wasn't the right time to move, but the pressure from his class made him do it anyway. As the class goes on, Nagisa tells the teacher that he is done with his task and stands up to give it to him. He walks around with a knife hidden in his hands, but when he tries to hit the giant octopus, his attack is stopped. Then Naza gives the teacher a hug, and a few seconds later, a bomb goes off. Some students are happy because they think they have finally stopped that weirdo. Kino and his co-workers tried to help the boy and asked the three what they had done. They said that they used the special rubber to make a grenade. The plan was for those bullets to kill the professor while leaving Nagisa with only small wounds. When the students look to the other side, they see that the monster's whole body is covered by a thin membrane. They looked for the body, but soon found that the big yellow head had not been hurt at all and was hiding on the room's ceiling. After hearing the whole conversation, it's clear that he can change his skin once. He didn't get hurt because his skin was very tough and could take the full force of the blast. But the monster was very angry at the three people who came up with the plan and put an AZAS life in danger. As his hatred grew, his face turned red, and in a few seconds, he went to the homes of the parents of each of those three students and stole their nameplates. The professor says that he couldn't hurt the government because he made a deal with them. But if they put the lives of other co-workers in danger, their families would again have to deal with the consequences. After threatening the students and giving them a talk, he tells them to go back to their seats and continues with the class. When Kao asks the professor his name, the alien says he doesn't have one. So she suggests that the students call him Kuro out of kindness. Everyone likes the idea, including the professor himself, so that will be his name from now on. When Tomi gets to school later that day, everyone is gathered around the basketball hoop, and Koro sensei is stuck in it. Soon after, Irina comes, and both of them ask the students what's going on. The students say they set up that trap the day before and caught the teacher while she was spinning around. Koro sensei gets knocked down when the net comes loose. When they get the chance, the students shoot him. But the crazy octopus is faster and appears on the school roof in the blink of an eye. At that very moment, a new student comes to school. His name is Akaba Karma, and he was kicked out of class because he was so violent. The boy glues some anti-teacher materials to his right hand and tries them out when he meets his new teacher the next day. Koro sensei is surprised to find an octopus stabbed into his desk. Carmen says he's sorry and says he killed the animal because he thought it was his teacher at the time. The alien walks up to the boy and says, I'll show you how powerful those tents are. First, he uses the octopus to make takoyaki. Then, he stuffs the boy's mouth with the dumpling and uses the chance to glue fake nails on him. 
Naza meets his new classmate, who is very quiet, on the way home later. After getting into a fight with boys from another school, the young man thinks back to a time when he was still in class at his main strategy and says that he will always be by Karma's side, even if Karma gets into fights easily, taking note that Naza is close by. He says that even though Koro-sensei is a little strange, he is a good teacher, but they still have to kill him. The professor then shows up and tells them to keep practicing their fighting skills. Then Karma asks the professor if he would be willing to put his life at risk to protect one of his students. When the monster says yes, the boy makes a very important choice. The boy pulls his gun out and jumps off the edge of the cliff. His plan is to shoot Koro-sensei as soon as he tries to help him. During free fall, Carmen talks about the day he beat up three mean kids in his class. A boy with style. When he found out what had happened, the principal didn't like that he had hit some of the best students, so he was sent to classy. Kuro-sensei builds a web with his tentacles to catch the boy and keep him from falling. He was able to save his student this way without putting himself in danger. The boy is brought back to the surface, and he leaves because he is upset. At the Ministry of Defense, the president says that Japan has been attacked with missiles from several countries in the two months since that thing came to Earth. But the alien octopus helped save them in the end. The president even says that he wanted DMI to handle this problem, but since nothing has been done so far, he decided to send a new student to kill that monster. We found out the next day in class that this new student was actually a robot with artificial intelligence. He wanted to get rid of the alien teacher, but it couldn't hurt a student on its first attack. The crazy robot tries to kill common sense with its machine guns. As expected, its blows don't do anything, but that machine is very smart and can learn and change. During class time, the machine kept attacking, which made the other students very unhappy because they could barely pay attention to what was being taught. In the end, we still had to clean up all the mess the robot made, but the machine was making progress on its mission because it could learn quickly. It was now only a 0.001% chance that it would hit the teacher on the next try. If it kept going this way until they graduated, that number would go up to 90%. However, this percentage doesn't mean anything to the students. All they care about is not being bothered in class, so they want to find a way to stop the robot from shooting. They put it in chains, so it can't use its weapons. Koro-sensei walks up to his newest student after class and shows him a stack of papers with information about all of his students. This way, the robot could watch its co-workers to learn how to get along with them and get things done. Students get a message on their phones the next morning when they get to school. When they open the message, the AI tells them that it has decided to turn itself into an app to make it easier for its co to talk to it. It also says that it will stop trying to get rid of the teacher by itself and will instead try to learn how to work as a team. Everyone agrees to call the new student Risu when Kao suggests it again. The robot says that a new student has moved and will be coming to the school soon. A boy with white hair falls from the ceiling just after Koro Sensei walks into the room. Then a man dressed like a beekeeper walks in and tells the boy to use the door. The next time he sees the boy, he will say that he is the boy's guardian, Shero, and apologize for what happened. Risu tells its friends that this is Hark and that they went to the special agent school together. The boy says he is stronger than everyone else there and asks Koro Sensei to fight him. The professor agrees to the duel, and Shero sets up a single rule that says the loser is the first person to leave the area made by the desks. As soon as the fight starts, he makes his first move. Ike can pull off one of the tentacles of the professor. Everyone is surprised when the boy shows that he has tentacles coming out of him. When Kuro-sensei thinks back to his past, he sees that the boy's tentacles are still growing. This makes the teacher angry. The boys hit the professor, but he dodges all of their blows and sheds his skin to get rid of them. As he hangs from the ceiling, this is the second time in the same month that he has used his secret defense. His tentacles regenerate, and Professor Octopus is about to run out of energy. Because of this, he can't move out of the way of the next attack, so that boy beats him up. After he has recovered from the blows, he admits that this is the first time he has fought someone on his level. But he is not easy to give up on. Kuro sensei weakens his enemy by using a rubber knife made by the Ministry of Defense, as his tentacles were made of the same stuff as the rest of the octopus. When the boy's tentacles were rounded up, it slowed him down, so the teacher used the chance to throw Iena out of the sea. Even though the professor's skin kept him from getting hurt, the boy was out of the ring. He lost the fight because of this. Shero then takes his student with him and says they will be back. Soon, when class was almost over, Naza and Kaio went up to the teacher to ask why he chose to teach class East. At that moment, Koro-sensei says he did it to keep a promise to someone else. He still couldn't say who that person was or what he had promised. Then Naza asks if there is anything they can do now to make it easier to kill the alien professor in the future. When asked this question, Koro-sensei tells the students that they should spend the weekend at school to study, just like he does. This would give the other students one more chance to get rid of him. The class agrees with the idea, and the teacher calls the activity for the weekend assassination training. Koro-sensei uses his super speed to teach each student individually, giving them lessons in the subjects they were having the most trouble with that night. Meanwhile, Tomi gets a call from his boss, who tells him that a new coach has arrived. 
The next morning, Koro-sensei comes to Tai's room right after he wakes up. When asked about his love life, Tai starts to think and remembers the moment he lost his lover. As agreed, Taka was there the next morning. Akira goes to school and tells everyone that he will be the new kid in class E but before he starts training, he brings the students breakfast, and they like their new sensei right away. Later, Irina goes to talk to Tomi about her friend Takoka, who she served with in the army. She tells Tomi that Takoka's way of teaching is to get close to his students and make them feel like their family. The problem with this is that the second day of training and talk starts right after he starts being a dictator and even starts beating up students. Kazaki gets sick and falls down. So the trainer asks the girl if she is all right. She says she can't take it anymore and would rather train with Mr. Tomi. At that point, the man gets up and gives the girl a slap. All of the students get together and ask the teacher to let their classmate go, but the man is determined to teach her a lesson. But Tomi comes up and grabs his fist before he can land the second blow. He tells that crazy person to leave his students alone. Taka says that Tai's ways of training aren't good, and that's why those teens were so weak. He tells the man to pick his best student to fight with him, and if that student is able to put the knife to his body even once, he will admit defeat and leave that school. Then Tomi picks Naza, but tells him he doesn't have to do this if he doesn't want to. But most of the students didn't even know that Naza is good at killing by nature. The boy is very good at hiding this skill behind his calm personality, but he has a strong desire for blood. The boy can't hide his happiness when he has to face Taka. He smiles and walks toward the man, who was very sure of himself, but as soon as he sees the boy's face, he is completely speechless. At that moment, Mag Giza puts the knife into the coach's neck and knocks him down. The man gets very angry and wants to fight again. He couldn't stand to lose to such a brat, but Mag Giza keeps reminding him of the deal. He thanks Takeaka for what he taught him, but he tells him to take his loss and leave in shame. He decides to leave, and all of the students thank Naza for getting rid of that crazy psycho. Even though it is raining, school is still in session. When Koro-sensei walks into the room, everyone notices that something is wrong with him. The octopus's head was so big because it had taken in so much water science. It was almost time for class, and Okuda tells her teacher to drink the poison. She used everything she knew to get ready. Everyone makes fun of the girl's innocence, but Koro-sensei decides to drink that strange liquid with her. So, his face gets pale, and all of a sudden, horns start growing on his head. Finally, his whole body turns white, as if it were frozen. He quickly gets better, though, and thanks Okuda for making such a strong poison out of sodium hydroxide, which kills humans but doesn't hurt him. Lastly, he tells her that he would be happy to show her how to make a poison that is even more dangerous. Kuro-sensei runs away while his students try to catch him by making his body as thin as a blade. After a few minutes, he goes back to normal and tells the students to call Professor Tomi and Professor Arena and meet in the schoolyard. Kuro-sensei tells the students that a good agent should always have a plan B in case plan A doesn't work. Suddenly, the teacher takes off like a rocket and destroys everything on the way back to school. He just threw a bomb into the air. The alien then leads the students back to the classroom and tells them that on their next test, they will have to use all of their knowledge to make a perfect plan to kill him. He says that the students who get the best grades in each subject will be able to cut off one of his tentacles to help them on their quest. With each tentacle he loses, his speed slows down, which makes it more likely that the students will be able to kill him. Koro-sensei gave his students a great reason to put an even more effort into their studies. As the class ended and the students went home, the teacher decided to give his best English student, Nakamura, a chance to use the language in real life. So Koro-sensei takes her to the US, where she can talk to them directly. The best math student went to China to figure out how high the Great Wall was, and Keanu went to Italy to figure out how much the Tower of Pisa tilts. In this way, all of the students were able to go to school outside of Japan. After the test in Koro, Sensei was able to finish his graduation photo album. So, on the day of the final, each of the three could cut off one of the tentacles of their teacher. The next day, the students got ready to put the plan to get rid of Koro Sensei into action. They build everything they need to do their mission well. While watching the fireworks that night, the students thought about whether or not they really had to kill Koro-sensei, even though they liked him as a teacher but had to get rid of him to save the world. Koro-sensei pops up out of nowhere and says that he can't wait to see their performance the next day. The big day has finally come, and the students are getting ready to start the operation. After getting their weapons, they go to the place where they will be killed. Koro-sensei is tied down, and the rest of the trap is shown. The gang didn't forget anything, and everyone was eager to get their reward. Nagisa says that Koro-sensei will be thrown into a bathtub full of water after his tentacles are cut off. On a day when it was raining, the boy figured out that water is one of the alien octopus's weaknesses. The students get ready to shoot and rip the teacher's tentacles off, and then they throw gallons of water at him. Two students finally walk up to the monster and shoot rubber bullets right into its face.
Soon after that, the students found him, but his whole body was gone. Only his head was left, which was wrapped in a crystallized pellicle with a high density that could protect him from anything outside. Even the special bullets couldn't do anything. That was Koro-sensei's only defense, which not even a nuclear bomb could break. So, the students come up with the plan to put him in a pool full of anti-teacher bullets. When the pellicle broke, the bullets would kill the octopus as soon as they hit it. But Koro-sensei says that if that happens, he can explode again and throw out all the bullets before he gets hurt. All of a sudden, with no explanation, some of the students start to pass out, and Kino figures out that they have a very high fever. The man tells Taka and his friends that before he left, he put a virus in before he left. Some students drinks. He even says that if they don't take the antidote within three days after getting the virus, they will die. In this case, it was clear that he was the only one who knew how to stop that virus. Takayaka says that he is there to get back at Naza because he has become a laughing stock at the Ministry of Defense because of him. He can't sleep even when he just thinks about the boy. Taka says he won't give the antidote to the boy unless the boy gives it to the teacher. NAZA doesn't want to do that, though. Even worse, even shows up and attacks the boy. Tomi tries to help him, but she gets hurt in the process. The boy is there to get another chance to fight Koro. Then, Sensei Karma grabs Naza, and the two of them run away to stop their teacher from coming. Aya goes after him, but Taka and his men get away with the antidotes while the other students try to help their sick classmates. Parma and Naza try to hide from the boy by climbing a tower. But the boy finds them and uses his tentacles to break the ladder they were using to get to the top. Then, Naza throws the ball to his friend, who is caught by the boy right away. Karma tries to avoid the attacks, but almost falls off the tower in the process. Eaton catches him with his tentacles, but the boy attacks him with the sphere. Karma tries to get away over and over again, but he keeps getting knocked down. At that moment, NAZA manages to hang on to the tower before the ladder is completely destroyed. The red-haired boy gives up and says he will give the teacher to the boy. But he throws the ball at his friend instead, and Eaton lets go of his tentacles right away. But he didn't expect it to start raining right then, and when the boy's body got wet, he lost his powers. Kuro-sensei says that the student's plan is great. Since the boys knew it was going to rain at that time, they decided to kill their teacher on that day. This was the plan B. The octopus says that IK is welcome to join the E-class if he is still interested. Just then, Risu sends the boys a message to let them know what's going on at school. As they wait in Takayaka, Za walks up with a bag in his I hands. hope you liked the movie. Please like, comment with your favorite part of the movie and subscribe to see more films like this and I shall see you in the next film. Take care.